Very brief background of the speaker and we shall begin swiftly. Uh, Mr. Mamoun al Azami is originally from Bangladesh and moved to the UK afterwards. He has a Master of Arts in Development Studies from the University of Manchester, UK. He has attended at least, at least 70 different courses on management skills, public relations, community development, policy, planning, log frame, as well as many others. Since 2016, he is the Director of Global Community Development, Murabi Consulting UK. He has vast experiences, 48 years in international dawa and leadership efforts. His competencies and interests include, but not limited to, community development, organizational development, leadership development, and many others. Without further ado, let us give a warm applause to our esteemed speaker, Mr. Mamoun al -Azami, to deliver a session on human resources management. Mr. Mamoun al -Azami, please. I don't need to be <coughs> No, I can use this mic. In fact, it's, I can do without mic, if, if it's okay. Um, you can try to see if it yeah, this, 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 this will okay. <coughs> I will use it. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen, as-salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidil Mursaleen wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in. My brothers and sisters, assalamu alaikum. I say that I have a new battery here, therefore I don't need a microphone. Am I right or wrong? Can you hear me at the back? Okay. Then I don't need to, uh, because I find it confined and it's a kind of prison that I would like to be free from. Uh, community development is part of the training uh, that made me uh, free. So I don't do lecture because I don't, uh, if it is too long, people go to sleep. Uh, I, I need to be engaging. So let me start with two, one verse and one hadith, uh, which is related to community development, but we will not talk about much of community development as such, because that's a topic uh, later on in, during the weekend. Today is about human resource management. The brothers here who organized the program, they chose four topics from 60 topics I gave them, um, because you can't do everything, so they had to choose. And they are the best uh, knowers about the best topics of the ground. Because I'm, this is the first time in Hong Kong. So let me start with the verse about the theme of community development. A'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Kuntum khayra ummatin ukhrijat lin nas. Ta'muruna bil ma'roof. Wa tanhawna anil munkar. Wa tu'minuna billah. This is from Surah Ali Imran. I think it is 110. So it says, you are the best community, the Ummah. All the believers are one community. Kuntum khaira ummatin ukhrijat lin nas. Kharaja in Arabic, kharajun is to get out, to select, to exit. That's why it says khuruj. Exit door is written khuruj. Okay. So ukhrijat lin nas, you have been raised, identified, selected, appointed. Linnas for the humanity, not for Muslims, for humanity. So our target is humanity. Our target is people. Materials will come and go, but people are the biggest resource, the biggest assets. And I will give you an example soon. So you have, Kuntum Kharaumatin Ukhrijat Linnas. We have a job description as an Ummah, as an Ummah to serve humanity. That means command for what is right and stop what is wrong, prevent what is wrong, and have trust in Allah and believe in Allah. Okay. Then hadith says, Khairun nas, mayyanfa'un nas. Again, it's nas, not mu'mineen or believers. The best of you are those who benefit other people. That's the theme of community development. If we think of only Hong Kong people, or only one race, one religion, one nationality, then we are breaking this concept. We are breaking this theme of our role as Muslim development agents, social, social development agents, social leaders. Okay? So let me 
let me go this is just as a part of introduction these are the contents I want to connect with and before sometimes what I'll do uh, instead of saying I will ask you and I would like you to respond because then not only your mind I wanted to say that people are biggest resource let me give you an example for triple IT which is International Institute of Islamic Thought based in Virginia uh, in, in United States it's the biggest intellectual Muslim intellectual research and publication organization that exists in the world today and they have published in Arabic and English many many books some French too so they have people around the world dotted around the world so they are sending me I'm there if you like NGO management consultant uh, I'm being sent to different countries and it's their plan with which uh, me brother Yusuf uh, and uh, Dato we are all working under the same theme and umbrella in order to upgrade the capacity now human resource is powerful because even all of you who have achieved certain levels of achievement in in professional and academic or other fields just hear this because there are a lot more potential in each one of us and we can grow bigger and contribute better than we are doing today let me summarize it in one story I went to Kenya in 2015 that was my first uh, trip for triple IT to run a three-day program and that was actually intensive whole day program if you like I started on Friday evening and whole day Saturday and whole day Sunday I was standing this is a one-man show okay but subhanallah with office work I get tired easily with this kind of work with dawah combined with professional topics professional topics backed by Quran and Sunnah that gives me uh, much less uh, tiredness so that's why when I came on the 13th I didn't sleep all night because I was passing through and in, in flight and I can't sleep on flight unless they gave me a, give me a bed which is not possible in economy class and is there no need for spending too much money for business class it's just too much to spend so I can't sleep but then with brothers here and sisters here I didn't feel tired yet I didn't sleep whole for 48 hours okay this is uh, barakah min Allah ta'ala this is a blessing from Allah so this 2015 the organizer in Kenya of that program who is a representative of uh, triple IT for 10 countries in the East Africa region he told me himself he runs uh, an, um, uh, uh, what's called orphanage he runs an orphanage with 400 orphans in the north of Kenya anybody knows about geography what's north of Kenya which country it borders with anybody you know the, there's a joke about geography this man was boasting that uh, any country uh, this his friend was saying this kind oh I have been there I have been there I have been there so he thought he must be very good on geography he said uh, maybe you uh, you have good knowledge of geography oh I went there too <laughs> you get it that means he didn't go anywhere so north of Kenya is Somalia and west of Somalia is Ethiopia these two countries contain a, a, a big, large area of Somali people Somali Kenyans and Somali Ethiopians they are all religious wise 100% Muslim language wise they have their own language as well as the national language Amharic uh, in Ethiopia for example so in, in Kenya they, they have Swahili okay so he went to the north where his uh, orphanage is and found one five-year-old boy crying his parents just died and he had nobody in the family to look after with government permission he took this boy and put it in his orphanage he went through the Islamic education system the madrasa then he went through the general education system of the national curriculum he finished both and then he went to University of Nairobi and he completed honors degree in sociology 
After that, the authorities of the orphanage appointed him as the manager of the place where he grew up. He became manager. His name is Abdul Salam, by the way. His, he became manager who can not only manage the office, manage the staff, look after the children, 400 of them, but also he was the khatib of that place because he went through Islamic education first. So I met this brother who is the organizer of that region and who organizes things uh, coordinating with me. I went to Rwanda in April last year and I said, what happened? How is Abdul Salam? Because I haven't met him, but I know of him. So he said he's not, no longer manager of the orphanage. I said, what happened to him? He said he, he was taken by the regional government in the Somali area to be the chairman of the Public Service Commission. Now come back. If he was left at five years old, what would, what would have happened to him? What would have contributed, what he would contribute to the society? What kind of, he would become a liability, but now he's a big asset. So people are powerful. People have lots of things to contribute, more than consume. If we have a mindset of contribution rather than consumption, then we will leave a legacy which will give us rewards in Qabr, as long as it's for the pleasure of Allah. If it is for the praise of people, it will come. But no reward from Allah. Nothing. Because even Allah says that shaheed, alim and donor will go to Jahannam. Because they did all the good things for the praise of people, not for the pleasure of Allah. Okay. So let's see. So that's the story. Can you see how much talent this boy had? And how much of our own talents here we have not yet utilized? Community development is a natural Islamic role. The Prophet Wasallam, if you look at it, I will bring his example of how he, I analyze his life into three sections. One is before he was officially appointed as Prophet and during Meccan period and Medinan period. These three are distinct but lots of rich lessons for us to grow and to understand and to emulate. Okay, so you have, sorry, you have quotations, I will give quotations, then I will ask you to contribute about what you think human resource management is. I would have, if you asked me, I didn't say uh, anything, I would, because it's thematic on community development, the first program would have been right for community development, but it doesn't really matter. It's not one from the other flowing, it's not one dependent on the other, okay. This is the quote. This is about Musa alayhi salam when two sisters were unable to collect water for their um, animals from a well because there were too many men. Musa alayhi salam came and helped them. After that, they said to the father, engage him on wages, wages, huh? truly, to employ him. Because he's Khawi and Amin. Al Khawi al Amin. So these two qualities are very important to engage somebody to do something productive. We can also check do we have, are we Khawi and are we Amin? Do we have physical, emotional, and intellectual strength? And can we be trusted to deliver the best in the, even the absence of supervision? So this is one about human resource management is if you want good people, you are looking for strong characters and trustworthy characters. Strong doesn't mean rude. That's another uh, side we need to understand. Strong, physically strong, intellectually, emotionally, strong like that. Uh, but humble in relationship. Then, then you see another verse. Allah commands you to render back your trust to those whom they are due. Meaning, uh, to give them what is due to them. Okay, what is their right. When you judge, then it says, Antahkumu bil adl. When you judge, judge with justice. Human resource management without justice, 
Community development without justice does not exist. Not in Islam in any case. If you go to Bible or uh, Torah, justice is still strong. The fact that some people of those religions don't care doesn't remove the reference from there. Then again, hadith. The first one was Quran, this is hadith. Quotation. Okay? You can read. And Allah says, if you don't, sorry, if you don't give, you take the full job, but you don't give them full pay. And uh, I was in Saudi Arabia, a lot of private employers, a lot of private employers do not give them uh, laborers' wages. I know personally people up to one and a half years, no salary was paid. Government jobs, they pay. But private people, they don't pay. One incident where people said, you are going to pay in Akhira. He said, if you can take in Akhira, you take it there. Don't, hear, don't ask him. <laughs> How daring. He's actually threatening, kind of uh, <clears throat> playing with Allah's threats. So that's being extreme rude because uh, he's going to be in trouble for saying that. And look at this. People have authority and power. They use unjustly. They will never enter paradise. So any, you see, uh, it's about leadership. Uh, so every one of us is a leader. And we'll talk about leadership in another uh, session. So, and we will be asked about the leadership role. Uh, then there is, uh, Whatever ni'mah you are enjoying, talk about it. Not, I didn't have that, I don't have that, I don't have that, making complaints. If you count the blessings of Allah, you will never finish it. On the day you will be asked all the blessings you enjoyed, you will be asked questions about them. And if we are not grateful, just uh, three days ago, before I came, I was looking at, you know, the Lauren Booth, the sister-in-law of Tony Blair, who became Muslim. She was describing her Gaza visit. I think some of you have seen. Subhanallah, she was talking about somebody whose uh, legs have been amputated. And mother was crying in Cairo hospital. And when he woke up from his, uh, he got his consciousness, he saw his mother crying. He said, why are you crying? She said, you have, you, your legs are gone. She said, Alhamdulillah, I have my hands. My head is working. So this is, this is really powerful. This is really powerful. Legs are not power. Power is attitude. There's a saying, attitude not aptitude determines altitude. Do you get it? Aptitude is ability. Attitude is mindset, approach. The way I look at it, my perspective. Attitude, not aptitude, determines altitude, how high we go. Okay. Then from expert, look at this. Now this is interesting. Hiring and developing people. You don't, bet means you don't invest in strategies, you invest in people. You focus on people. Okay. This is an expert who was former CEO of a big company. And you heard of this man, Sir Richard Branson, as an iconic man. He says, Train people well, so they, even they leave, they are well trained, you have made a contribution. So wherever they are, they will do something good. But say, treat them well, so they will stay, not go. Can you see? Can you see people with wisdom and experience and deeper understanding of human nature? Says, if you train them, there was a question, there was a question about if you train them. I was there in the meeting. You know Muntada Aid, Muntada Trust, Al Muntada Organization, and it has a Muntada Aid. And their trustees meeting, I was, uh, I was present. 
just last week I was present at last week or 10 days ago so they said if we spend money on developing people it will, we are spending money and they will leave and go for a better job so the Murambi consultant owners were there said what if you don't invest in them and they stay and I'm productive and cost you more at least they will go and take goodwill and they will know they will have a good heart for you because they have learned and improved their self, themselves professionally and with attitude they will be, bring back something good for you if they stay and become unproductive and troublemaker then you go down at least you stay there when they leave and they grow and they give you a good name so this is where so these two things is you train them well and then treat them well see this is human resource management this is justice the earlier one Quran and Hadith points okay this is you can read you see planning organizing directing motivating coordinating controlling these are management roles these are management roles most of them are not dealing with people but tasks doing things achieving certain results how many people have heard of X theory and Y theory about human resource management okay just one X theory is more dictatorial I will tell you if I want to know your opinion I will tell you that it's big boss huh? the other side is uh, Y theory is kind of uh, more kind to them and a little too much loose but still you get better results with the second type which is where more open type relating with people if you um, if you have time watch a film military film which is part of leadership training for American military officers it's called 12 o'clock high oh it's out of order okay okay this is the film is about two hours it really shows it compares two commanders one commander managing his people with kindness and uh, without strictness too much kindness in, and there was no discipline and they were not fighting force they loved the commanders but they achieved nothing then another one came who cared about their soldiers but he was disciplinarian he was willing to put the foot down where it was necessary for them to achieve things together and he achieved great things so and so much that he was part of their efforts and he tired himself out at one stage he couldn't get on the plane just during World War two he couldn't go on board the plane because he didn't have strength left and he still wanted to go and his people pulled him back has anybody seen this it's really worth seeing about leadership but it's not so much about community development anyway so this is planning and you can read the two references is general reference okay these are technical things process of getting activities completed efficiently and effectively what is efficiency and effectiveness anybody knows what is efficiency and what is effectiveness Hmm? Do things right and do right things. Okay, any more, uh, more focused? It's it's nice. Uh, this is actually Warren Bennis, a leadership guru, compared very nicely, which I will uh, share with you later uh, on another uh, session. Um, Warren Bennis, Warren Bennis. If you want to know, he is, in my view, the best uh, and very succinct definition maker on leadership. So you said something that it's from him. 
So efficiency is how smooth the operation is, how systematic it is. It is like how smooth the car is driving. Okay? So it is efficiency, the smoothness of the process. Effectiveness is what? What is effectiveness? We need to understand there are three E's for basic organization assessment, organizational performance assessment. At the basic level, three E's. And these two E's I have mentioned, let me mention the other. If you want to assess any organization's performance, you see if it is run on economy. Oh, it's permanent. Is it? Looks like it. <laughs> Why is it here? It's dangerous. You have to have... We can go ahead with this one. Yeah, remove, remove all the permanent ones, our economy. Efficiency, effectiveness. Huh? Economy is low cost, high returns. Efficiency is smooth operation. Effectiveness is getting the results. Are you getting the results? It may be the car is running smoothly, but it's in the wrong direction. Effectiveness is it's the right direction, and you get to your destination. So that's why, oh, while I'm playing with this one, it's moving between right and left. Huh? Okay. The, this is next, the philosophy of Islamic human resource management. Tell me, what's the philosophy of Islamic human resource management? What should be the philosophy? What should be the philosophy of Islamic resource management? What's the first philosophy? What's the very top philosophy of Islamic human resource management? As Muslims, what should be our main focus? Allahumma inni as'aluka ridaaka wal jannah. What does it mean? What does it mean? Anybody knows here? Allahumma inni as'aluka radaka wal jannah. This is something very important for all of us to not just know but feel. Let me see. Is it, is it halal then? Huh? Okay. Radaka wal jannah. Okay. Allahumma, O oh Allah, inni indeed I am as aluka begging of you. Sual as aluka, I am asking ka you. Radaka with your pleasure. Wal jannah, you know what it means. So this is the fundamental principle of everything we do. If it is not, then we have no reward on akhirah. We are not internalized, spiritualized on the faith. Because faith must permeate, reach all activities and thoughts and acceptance and rejections. Then we are really doing human resource management. This is the philosophy of everything we do. Seek the pleasure of Allah and Jannah. That must be top. Islamic human resource management or Islamic activities, Islamic decisions, Islamic management of any kind, Islamic leadership of any kind, anything personal or social or political or economic or professional, whatever we do, if it is not at the top of the agenda of our thoughts and feelings, then we are going to fail in an akhirah. And indeed, if, if that's the case, then we might as well fail in dunya. Because Allah may not give barakah. Then we fail in dunya too. So this is something I want to emphasize. Everything, you see, this subhanAllah, Allah has given me the opportunity to do da'wah for 50 years. This year it's 50 years. But professionally, I have been doing it with voluntary time, 48 years is right. Professionally, 35 years in community development. 15 years in British government and 20 years internationally with Islamic Development Bank. Previously, until I left UK, I had to separate 
the Islamic work with the professional work. But in Islamic Development Bank, I could combine the two. And happily, the Malaysian bosses that I had, they gave me free hand on this. As long as they got results, they didn't mind the process. So I'm still in touch with most of the countries, 50 countries still. So this is the fundamental issue of the Muslim. Whatever job you do, is this the top of our minds? If, is this something, the most important thing in our lives, in our thoughts, in our planning? Then, philosophy, we create congenial atmosphere in society. If we have our staff management, our volunteer management, our home management, something that inspires, not just it trains and explains and educates, but inspires, Inspiration provides motivation to do the thing, not just knowing but doing. That translation, that transformation, that move from one status to another requires inspiration. Okay, so we need to create congenial, if we have that philosophy, that means we need to inspire people. Simply put, we need to inspire people. Not tell them off, but inspire them. Tell them off, you lose them. Inspire them, you win them. Now we need to build human relations, a relationship building, and then go a bit deeper, become friends, and then you serve the humanity. Kuntum khaira ummatin, lin nas. If we say, okay, as long as my production is good, I don't care how the home, home life is, I don't care what he's doing in the society, we need to care. We need to care because if a good, productive person we have, whether volunteer or staff, we need to have an impact on the other parts of life. Then if they are happy in other parts of life, they will be more productive here in the office or in the shop floor. Or so in the uh, job, you can see better living and dignified living and a peaceful living. Better living means economically better, better off, improved. Okay. Dignified is when you have self-reliance, you don't have to depend on others. If you have good income and you have, when you have good income, you don't have to depend on others, your mind is free. And it's more dignified, you can talk freely. You can be really independent in thought and action. Okay? So that's why Islamic management is all about developing people. See, economically, physically, physical fitness is required. A, uh, I saw a note in London says about health, use it or lose it. <laughs> so those who only drive and never walk, then they are forced to walk to survive. Okay? So, I've seen in Saudi Arabia, people come right to the stairs of the mosque with the car, and they wouldn't walk. And then I see them, lots of them in the hospital, because they have neglected the physical fitness. So, physically is important. Of course, they're working so economically, physically. Mentally means intellectual capacity. Emotionally means heart and feelings. S professionally means what they do. Spiritually means faith-centered. And socially, how the relationship goes with others. Now, let me ask, what do you think Islamic uh, human resource management, what is the most important verse? There are two. Three verses I make reference to. Anybody knows any verse? You see, you need to study Quran. You are, you are developed people. You need to study Quran not just for spiritual enrichment, but professional enrichment too. Because there are professional guidance. I was quite surprised. Ten years ago when I started studying Quran, and I found to, to my deep amazement that there are professional guidance given in the Quran. The principles are there. You just take them and apply them by transforming the principle into the management practice, leadership practice, organizational role practice, then you see the connection. There is a verse, 
سورہ نمبر 43 ورس نمبر 32 اینی ہاف ایز ہیر ہو ایز ہاف ایز ہیر اوکے سو اوکے ناو یو ہیو بین ہائیڈنگ ناو یو ار ایکسپوز اوکے اٹ سیز ورفعنا فوقهم فوق بعد درجات ليتخذ بعد بعدهم بعدا سخرية This is surah number 43 verse number 32 This is what it says here The meaning is Now 1400 years we have been sleeping and this has been there This is management leadership concept Allah says, I have, and see, this is the way Allah speaks, we have. We have raised you above others, so you command work from them. Get work done. So work is not missed out. The role is you are raised in rank by Allah, not you. You may be there, but Allah put you there. So it says, وَرَفَعْنَا فَوْقَهُمْ سَمْ Above, فَوْقَ بَعْدٍ Others, Darajat, Ranks. لِيَتَّخِدَ بَعْدُهُمْ بَعْدًا سُخْرِيَةً So they can get work done by them. So this is the way you should study Qur'an. This is an ocean of knowledge and wisdom. We just don't use it, so we lose it. Okay? So the Western people, do you know, I have a photo of a church in America, in Atlanta, which is talking about humanity as one... And it's from Quran, the quotation is there, printed on the stone of the, in front of the gate of the church. Now, what are we doing? We don't even use them. So, from there, you can see these four practice, human resource practice is drawn. Okay? Any questions on so far? Because I'll not go into details which are in the file and I'll leave the file Uh, with Brother Yusuf to share with you, anybody uh, who wants, okay. So the, the PowerPoint uh, is already uh, within the computer which is showing. So I'll not go into detail because of the time. So just interrupt me when you want to interrupt me. Okay, so this is one verse. Another verse which is leadership more than management. By the way, what's the difference between leadership and management? We're talking about management, human resource management. Then there is another word called leadership. What's the difference? We are not. Uh, I think there is a community leadership topic. So you will know. But just as a side point to today, tonight, what's, what do you think the difference is? Where is the management focus is? Remember what we say before? See? What are these? Is it leadership or management? Management. The technical things to achieve now. And leadership is long term vision and direction and inspiration. Okay? So, this is Surah Zukhruf. Oh, sorry, instead of bracket, it became 9. 43.32. So, you see, 14.40 is actually 14.40 now. It came. So we need to connect, reconnect with the, our main source of Quran and Sunnah to develop us professionally and outperform those who do not, who ignore Quran and Sunnah. The Spain, the Spanish civilization, the dark ages of Europe was the golden age of the Muslims. The learning and research and innovation was stopped. I will recommend, I will recommend you to go to Google and read the... Uh, the statement by Carly Fiorina. Oh, you see? Okay. This lady, okay, this lady You should read her speech. When was the uh, when was the Twin Tower event took place? Everybody knows that. When? 11 September, 2001. 
and that was September. In October, this lady was the chief guest. She was CEO at that time of Hewlett Packard. You know Hewlett Packard? Yes. She was CEO. And she, gave, she was the chief guest in the conference of the IT professionals. Okay? And she gave a speech as the chief guest. Towards the end of the speech, she says something about the Muslim civilization. And in praise at a time when the whole world was against Islam and Muslims. And she made a strong praise of Muslims of Spain. Because they were in the learning culture, developing culture, innovation culture. Creating something new for the benefit of people. Not destruction of bombs and mortars and missiles. But they created something that the, the world is still benefiting from. You go to Oxford and Cambridge, you'll find their manuscripts in Arabic on which they built the science and technology of the world today. Okay. I will not go into that. Uh, I'm just giving you economy efficiency effectiveness. There is, the explanation is there. There is a verse uh, given. Each one either a verse or a uh, hadith is given. On on this one. See, waste is sinful. Anybody knows a verse about waste being sinful? Anybody knows the verse? Inna al mubadirina kanu ikhwana shayateen. That means those who waste, they are brothers of shaitan. Who is saying that? Who is saying that? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that. So if we don't take note, what kind of Muslims are we? So I, I was taught and I follow it. When I'm doing wudu, I don't use the full force of the water. I do it as little as will be enough. And because others do it, so I go to the root and cut down on the speed. So they can't waste it, even if they wanted to. Particularly the children, you teach them and you still control what they can achieve. Okay, there's another. These are two verses from Quran about capacity utilization from the same point economy efficiency. This is about the uh, management, obedience, respect and authority. This is, anybody knows this verse? You see, if there is any conflict, any disagreement, go both management and uh, subordinates, go back to Allah and Rasul. This is wa amruhum shura bainahum. This one is really one five nine is is I would say number one verse about leadership. That other one was number two. This is Fabi Ma Rahmatim Min Allah Linta Lahum. Wala kunta fadan galid al kalbi lan fadu min hawli. Fafu anhum wasta firlahum wa shabirum fil amr. Fa ida azamta fatawakal Allah. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. I say, if you want to know about management leadership, you start with this verse. Please. Equal opportunities. Ya ayunnas, inna khalaknam min dhakrin wa untha, wa ja'alnakum shu'uban wa qaba'ila li ta'arafu, inna akramakum inda Allahi atqaakum. This is in uh, 49 surah, surah al-hujrat. You can see. This is 49, number 13. So, motivation and commitment. This is part of this 159. Then, forgive them. And ask forgiveness from Allah for them. This is how leadership and management should be. Then you consult them. Consult them in the conduct of affairs. Then it says, when you made a decision, go into action. Relying on Allah. Okay? So can you see the connection between Quran and modern day professional standards? Performance. This is, I'm not going to go into that. You can see the comparison between the conventional management and Islamic management. And these are the areas, definition-wise, nature-wise, basis, objectives, root and linkage, recognition, philosophy,
qualification, decision making and controlling and I have made a comparison ok. So, I guess you do not want to ask questions just uh, uh, so I am I am rushing I, I admit I plead guilty ok. So, I can stop and you can ask. You are teaching the management skill people. <laughs> <laughs> of course, here uh, I am talking to professional people, uh, qualified people, dedicated people who have a lot of achievement in life, but you can double it. Once you connect with Quran, the blessings from Allah will come. The more talents will become realized. They are internal potential then they come out and become external impact. This is traditional definition analyzed by Islamic perspective. This is again uh, continuing the same analysis. See objective are primarily two, these are mundane objectives and this is fundamental objective technical and professional objectives to fulfill maqasid al sharia anybody knows about maqasid al sharia particularly imam ghazali gave uh, maqasid al sharia which has been most praised by people there are other people other scholars but imam ghazali's one is more famous and islamic development bank has adopted as this five maqasid al sharia as foundation of islamic uh, human development comprehensive human development and management which is this just have a look. Deen is faith, the foundation of life. Okay, akhal is mind. Develop the mind, it is the most powerful, it's the most powerful gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It creates knowledge out of nothing. PhDs are like that. It creates ideas based on ilham, not wahi. Wahi is definite from Allah. Ilham is a spark of knowledge and understanding of ideas that come. So, فَأَلْهَمَهَا فُجُورَهَا وَتَقْوَاهَا The bad things and good things, they all come depending on what we are looking for. Okay? So, aql is development and utilization of powerful creative tool, uh, this mind. Okay? Maal is wealth, we all need it to survive and prosper. But it should not be the objective of life. But, okay. Nafs is physical existence. Okay, we'll stop. <coughs> Allah Akbar, Allah Akbar. After the zan is pretty much after eight minutes, the swallow will start. Yeah, I will finish. Uh, I have finished almost. Yeah, because I'm trying to interact, sure. but they are all absorbing it. Sure. What we can do is uh, we can go for prayer. I mean, uh, no, we'll finish it before. Finish, finish before. <laughs>
Okay, I have just one more slide left. Um, so, the, the principle, this maqasid uh, al-sharia is, maqasid means maqsad, maqasid is the purpose. The purpose is the preservation and promotion of the five. As foundation, the purpose, so the, the punishments that are there are for development, to prevent wrongdoing. But if we start with punishment, which Prophet ﷺ didn't, then we are into trouble. If we start with promotion, preservation, inspiration, education, explanation, then we are on solid ground. Okay, these five are to be protected and promoted. Nasl means the new future generation. And ourselves, our, our wealth, and our mind, and the middle is deen. Okay, and the last slide <coughs> is, yeah, so the last slide is, in practice, we need to have halal objectives, not just legal objectives. Legally, you can have uh, an alcohol factory. Is it halal? No. Therefore, an income would not be halal. And one Malaysian minister said, Muslims are very keen on halal food and not halal income. Which is true. You see, is it properly slaughtered? But my money is not halal. Either I have cheated somebody or I have done haram thing to earn it. Okay, most of the Bangladeshi restaurants, there are 10,000 of them in UK. Most of them sell alcohol because it's very profit making. And then they go to Umrah and Hajj. So some scholars from Bangladesh came and tried to persuade, so 10% gave up. But it took a lot of persuasion because there is going to be pain, painful cut in income. Okay, so these are things about in practice teamwork. You see, that 159 talks about teamwork. The Prophet was appointed by whom? Allah. Yet Allah is saying, consult your aids. So if he needed team by the command of Allah, who are we to be bosses and just dictators? This is not right. So in management, we can. There is no harm in consulting. Okay. Just one last thing I want to say uh, about this is that if you consult your subordinates, shall we say, or your volunteer leaders or others, I consult my children. I I, I just just don't tell them when they have grown up enough. Let me give you one concrete example. Three years ago, I came, every year I used to come to London for uh, an annual leave. So I always have my children, I have five children, and I would have them, and I would talk about family issues and how we can develop ourselves and our relationships. So I asked them about their views, what we can do to improve it and to strengthen it, to consolidate it. After a while, my elder daughter said, your grandson and granddaughter, seven and five, Ask them, maybe they have something to say. I said, it's a good idea. So I asked them, what do you think we should do to improve our relationship as a family? This uh, elder one, 
said to listen to each other. Not just talk, but listen. Two ears, one mouth. What does it say about ratio of listening and talking? You see, Allah has some wisdom there too. So he said, listen to each other. Seven-year-old. The five-year-old says to be kind to each other. Look at that. Very powerful message. And I still remember it, and I use it. So we need that kind of leadership where my position is not diluted by consulting, it's consolidated by consulting. And this is Islam in practice in management. May Allah help us and guide us. If you have any comments or questions, I hand over. Thank you very much. Let's give her a warm applause for her.